Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, recently, my iPhone battery had taken a turn for the worst. Yes, okay, Android fans, feel free to roast me about that admission there. And I must confess, I usually do everything online. But on this occasion, I was out and about, and I thought I would pop into the local phone store. And I've not done this for some time, and I was quickly greeted by an over-enthusiastic salesperson who's not seen a a real person walk through the door for a while, I think, who felt compelled to walk me through all the latest $1,000 smartphones. Did I stop at any point and say, wait a minute, do you know who I am? I'm the tech blog writer, I'll have you know. Of course I didn't, that's not my style. I continued to let them talk to me like I was an 80-year-old man walking into a smartphone store for the very first time. I listened to this sales pitch and made my escape. But one thing I really walked away with was whether you are an Android or an iPhone person, it's kind of irrelevant. All the phones out there now look almost identical and do exactly the same thing. And no matter how much we argue about the tech inside some of these devices, most people are only going to use them for selfies and scrolling down Instagram and Facebook feeds. So then I find myself drifting off and dared to look into the past through rose-tinted glasses of nostalgia. Remember when the phone landscape was full of quirky and different phones? And Nokia, for example, brought out so many great models that I remember, such as, I think it was the 950, the 7600, the 7280, the N-Gage, the N90, and of course the 3650. But inevitably, the iPhone arrived in 2007 and changed the world, or largely credited for changing the world and delivering this smartphone landscape as we know it. But also, it's guilty of making everything, well, a little bit samey. So when I discovered the FX Tech Pro 1, which essentially is a love letter to the old QWERTY keyboard phones of the past, yes, it delivers a healthy dose of nostalgia, but it also brings something different. So I wanted to find out a little bit more. So enough for me though, buckle up and hold on tight because I want to beam your ears all the way to London here in the UK. So we can speak with Adrian Lee Mao Ching and he's the co-founder of FX Technology and going to tell us all about it. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Adrian. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are, where you're based and what FX Tech is all about? Hi, Neil. Uh, Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I'm Adrian, one of the co-founders of FX Tech. We're a London-based business. We formed in early 2018, and we're a new smartphone brand to the market. So we're about creating premium smartphones and its related devices that focus on functionality, uh, hence FX. As as founders, we're huge users of smartphones. We, we, We use them for pleasure, we use them for work, for life in general. And our passion is creating phones that we want to use, phones that we think, you know, we, we think are great, phones that actually also bring back some of the features and technology that we miss, that we really used to enjoy, um, and we don't get on today's smartphone offerings. Now, your company tagline is technology refined. So I've got to ask, I mean, what do you mean by that? And why does FX Tech, why does FX Tech focus on refining retro technology i mean is there widespread demand for this i I mean looking at the mobile world congress the last couple of years i know that the old nokia handsets are going down a storm aren't they that's right that's right they are that's right they are exactly so to us the ideal smartphone is one that takes some of the best technology and features that we used to have and combines it with modern smartphone implementation to create this really well-balanced, perfectly designed device. So we bring things back in a modern way and we make it better. And for us, that's technology refined. A lot of people out there you know, that we speak to, we think that they miss a lot of these kind of technologies and features. So for example, the tactile feel that you get from pressing a physical button. You know, we don't have those anymore. The, the, the click that you get from a sliding screen, and let me just demonstrate that. Oh, I so, remember that sound well. It's so satisfying. Yeah. It's so satisfying to hear it. So so our focus is on having these again in modern smartphone. Now, what happened was when Apple came out with the first iPhone over 10 years ago now, we were presented with this single slab of glass and everyone followed suit. And over time, we've had less and less 
I think variations or alternatives to um, to this to the single slab. So we believe there's a demand out there. Um, we think that people still want the simple things like physical keyboards with nice tactile feeling keys. We think people still want headphone jacks, which also is a bit retro in some people's eyes. Um, sliding screens that give you that satisfying sound when it's open. And we're, we're confident that there are a lot of people who want this kind of stuff. Now, you recently announced the Pro One smartphone at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona this year. So what is it that makes it unique from other smartphones, would you say? Sure. The Pro One is probably the first smartphone that's come to market in years that's got a full landscape physical keyboard and a sliding screen that tilts when you lift it up to use. So we wanted to give users the very best full keyboard experience that we could think is possible. So we've got 64 keys. And we spent a lot of time designing the keys and the layout of them. So, for example, the keys themselves, the left keys, they're all fairly centered across the entire keyboard so that the travel distance between your thumbs is minimized. We've included cursor keys so that you can navigate around your applications. Uh, and that's really useful for things like uh, Excel for spreadsheets. And we've even made sure that the top row of keys is slightly shorter than the rest so that when you press them, your thumb doesn't keep touching the screen. So we've really put a lot of thought into making sure that the keyboard is one of the best experiences that you can get from uh, from a, a physical keyboard. It's incredibly um, cool. It really is. I mean, are there any other additional features that particularly excite you with the Pro One as well? Oh, definitely. So our camera uh, sensor is a Sony IMX363. It's the same one used in a Pixel 3 phone. Uh, we wanted the Pro One to be a really good landscape phone. So we've also included custom-made landscape gestures in the operating system where you can use the pill button on the right to then swipe right, swipe left to switch between apps and swipe up to close them. And this feature isn't used in stock Android or most Android phones, so this is unique to us. Then at the same time, we've included a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, We've put stereo speakers in the base of the unit, so when that's combined with the 155 degree tilted angle screen, it's ideal for watching your favorite movies. There's a dual SIM card tray for those that use two SIM card, more than one SIM card, especially if you're traveling, for example. And we've included a two-stage camera button so that uh, you have the option. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but you can take using the button right um, where your forefinger is placed uh, on the top. There's so many, I think phone manufacturers are often accused of not innovating anymore. And this seems to me like a complete antidote to that and incredibly exciting what you're doing and doing something a little bit different. But with so many phones on the market, who are the ideal users of Pro One and why do you think? Yeah, so we've designed this phone uh, for those that really want the option of having a physical keyboard uh, and in landscape. And actually, I think there are a lot of people that prefer it. Um, so... The first one is obviously working professionals, people that create documents, for example, on their phone and not just emails. So, for example, lawyers, journalists, writers, anyone in business. There's a load of people in IT and software who want to be able to uh, accurately write their code, say, log into a remote server, manage their servers, um, do lots of administration. Um, and then beyond that, there are those you know, who just say they don't get on with physical, with virtual keyboards. They really want to have a physical keyboard, something that they can press, um, and they want something that's different. So we're, our demographic really is anyone from who's doing social media from the age of, you know, in your young ages, all the way up to the age of, you know, the elder smartphone users who still want to have a physical button on keys, um, physical keys on their phone. Now, on this tech podcast, I do like to explore the stories behind companies and behind these inventions and whatever it is that they're created, whether it be a product or a service. So I'd love to explore more about how you and your partners founded FX Tech. I mean, how did the three of you meet? And have you have you had a mutual fascination with retro technologies? Yeah, very good question. The three of us came together uh, through mutual friends in London. Um, and just through conversations, we quickly found that we shared a passion for smartphones and in particular, some of the features and form factors that we no longer have. I used to love using these premium Nokia sliding um, handsets. You know, you had the ones that were made of very nice material, titanium and a very shiny, um, shiny aluminium. I, I used to love using those and the, the feeling of flicking it up when you answer a phone call. 
One of my partners, Lian Cheng, he used to love his blackberries. Uh, he would always be queuing up outside Selfridges, trying to be one of the first people to get his blackberries whenever they were launched in the UK. And he used to use his very rare Nokia N950, which was one of the last landscape sliding keyboard phones that was available on the market. Um, Lian Cheng had previously worked on a keyboard accessory for Motorola phones, and this is something that was uh, announced and designed uh, about two years ago now. But the goal was always to do a bigger smartphone. So when when the three of us as founders came together, we decided, hey, you know what? If there's nothing on the market, let's go and bring something out. Let's go and do it together. And I think our, one of our philosophies is, is, if it's not there, then let's go and create it. The, and that's the, how it started. The, I was just going to say the Nokia N950. I think I had one of them. That was a cool phone, wasn't it? It's a very cool phone, and there's still a huge following online of those that have it. Uh, you know, people's faces light up when they hear about it. It's it's uh, it's definitely uh, a special place in people's hearts. So, of course, at the MWC in Barcelona this year, there's going to be a lot of people excited about technology like this. So I'm curious, what kind of reception and reaction and interest have you had since announcing the Pro One? We've been really, really pleased with the reception since MWC. I think we've had over 60 instances of press coverage online. There have been YouTube videos from some of the big tech reviewers. A lot of the press has been, a lot of the content's been syndicated into different languages. And overall, the reaction's been really positive. We've got our social media pages live and, you know, we're very active on there. And I think generally the timing of our device is coming at an interesting time for smartphones. So you saw that last year there were some different camera designs um, with some of the smaller phones like the Oppo Find X, the Mi Mix 3, the Samsung Galaxy A880, which has just been launched, uh, and they all had sliding or moving bits with cameras. Then at MWC this year, all some of the big boys announced the folding phones, yeah. uh, and we saw you know we saw a lot of a lot of those. So there's a definite change in the landscape of shapes and the mechanics of phones, and and actually uh, there were, there's been one or two articles that have that right after MWC they said. Why go foldable when you can get a keyboard landscape device, which is a tried and tested approach, hence the Pro One. So for us, you know, the reception has been really good. People are, there are a lot of people out there who've been really, who are really passionate about this form factor. We get some amazing emails from a lot of our followers and fans that say, we love what you're doing. We can't wait to have the device, Um, you know. Please, you know, please bring it to us as soon as you can. And we are doing that. We are making sure that we get uh, go through our testing. We're making sure that we um, give people the best device we can as soon as possible. In terms of pre-orders, it's been live for six weeks now. We've had a really good number of order numbers. And globally, we've had demand from about 50 countries worldwide. So, so we're really pleased on the pre-order front. In terms of feedback and working with the community, we've had a lot of people request keyboard formats uh, in alternatives to to QWERTY. So we launched and we said we're going to do a QWERTY keyboard at the start. And people from all over Europe have asked for the different European formats, Middle East, um, Japanese as well. We've had the Nordic countries. and, And actually, we've decided, right, we appreciate there's a demand out there and we really want to try and uh, uh, listen to our customers. So we've decided to launch a Quartz keyboard for our German East European customers. That's a very, I think, straightforward design for us to do. And we'll be uh, putting that live on our website in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. I mean, we are living in an age now where the smartphones have blasted past that $1,000 range. And you're walking through any smartphone store and all the phones look remarkably similar. So for that reason alone, I love what you're doing. But I've got to ask, I mean, how much will the uh, the phone cost and will it be ava- when will it be available? And is it going to be shipped worldwide? The phone will cost £649, $649 or €649. Euros. And yes, it will be available worldwide. So at the moment, you can pre-order it on our website, and we're shipping in July. And our approach, our strategy, is to make it available in some of the major regions um, as we as as we as we become more popular and as we get the reunits available out there. And how do you see FX Tech evolving over the next few years? And do you think you're only going to continue evolving and creating new products? And is there any teasers that you could maybe leave us with? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So so we are looking to establish FX Tech as the smartphone brand that brings back missing features and tech and does it really well. 
So we've got a, a list of other products in the pipeline, which unfortunately I can't talk about today, but we are really excited about them. And when, we, when we've explained it to some of our, um, our friends, some of our family, um, they're also really excited as well. So we can't wait to do it. You know, we've got a really strong roadmap ahead um, and, you know, we're really, really excited. Sounds like we're going to have to get you back on in six months to 12 months, doesn't it? But before I do let you go, could I ask that you point the listeners to the, your website details, social channels, and how they can reach or contact a member of your team if they've got any additional questions about all those topics we've talked about today? Sure. So you can find us online at fxtech.com. So that's just fxtec.com. We've got a forum there with our community of users, and on social media, we're across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our handle is FXTEC. Or you can just drop us an email at in, info at fxtech.com. Well, like I said a few moments ago, you know, we can walk into any smartphone store now and there's a, a myriad of devices all over $1,000 that all look remarkably the same and do the same thing. But what I love about what you're doing here is you're focusing on that those missing features and the technology that we all miss and love and worked for a good reason too. And most importantly of all, for people listening, of course, $649 or pounds is a fantastic price point too. So I wish you the best of luck with this. We'll get you back on in a few months and find out how that journey's going. But more and anything just a big thank you for sharing that story with me today thank you neil it's been a pleasure adrian made some great points there and every manufacturer is chasing foldable phones and in many ways it almost feels like we've come full circle but rather than chasing folding screens that may or may not develop a crease over time the jury's still out on that didn't we already solve this problem with the qwerty keyboard phones many years ago so i do love what they're doing by producing something different that offers the best of the old world and the new world. And at $649 or pounds, it could be quite tempting too. But it's not going to be for everyone. So is there room in your life for the Pro One? I want you to share your pros, your cons, by emailing me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. You can also reach me on Twitter and Instagram at Neil C. Hughes. And also, while you're doing that, I want to hear about your favourite phone of past and present and possibly the quirkiest handset you've ever owned in your life. It's going to be interesting what you all come back to me with with this one. So keep those messages coming in. I'm, I'm genuinely excited on what you're going to come back at me with, but I'm afraid we're out of time once again. So I'll return tomorrow with another guest and another episode of the Daily Tech Podcast. So thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.